This is Adam Kerner with CAD Artisans and today we are going to be using SubAssembly Studio to create a railway subassembly that consists of two independently super elevated tracks and then uh, some uh, logic to make sure that the bottom of the ballast layer is always a minimum distance below the uh, lower uh, most point on the uh, sleepers and then uh, from that we'll construct the remainder of the geometry of, of the subassembly. Uh, we have uh, a handful of subassembly parameters defined for this. Uh, the subassembly parameters correspond with the subassembly properties shown in the uh, properties dialog in Civil 3D. And you can see here we have uh, properties or parameters for um, our codes, uh, slopes, some widths, and basically just all of the uh, dimensions and all of the codes that we're going to use within this uh, subassembly. Uh, we also have target parameters. Uh, we have an elevation and offset target uh, that are used to uh, optionally locate the uh, center of the right hand track. So the, uh, the left hand track is centered at the insertion point and the right hand track again is uh, going to be located either using that uh, offset and elevation target or uh, it can be uh, located just using a static width uh, that's specified relative to the, um, the insertion point. Once both of our uh, track centers are located, and again this is center in offset only, not in elevation, uh, this elevation actually corresponds with the elevation of the lower of the, the rails on each side. And that lower rail is going to be used as our rotation point for the super elevation. Um, so if we have a positive super elevation, our uh, lower rail will be on the left side, and um, then if we have a negative super elevation our lower rail will be on the right hand side uh, and this is again each uh, track is super elevated independently so this calculation has to be done on each side the way we accomplish this is using a conditional uh, component and if we look at that uh, a conditional is just an if then statement that says uh, in this case if my left track super elevation is greater than zero build whatever is attached to the true uh, path otherwise build whatever is attached to the false path. And we have that repeated on each side. Uh, again, independently super elevated. So on this side, on the right, we're checking the right super elevation uh, parameter. On the left, again, we're checking the left super elevation parameter. Uh, once those are located, uh, we will um, we'll merge the outer points off of each possibility uh, back into a single logical path. And from there, we'll construct the sleeper geometry on each side and then we'll connect the uh, inside top points on the sleepers and then on the outside top points of the sleepers we'll construct a choker that's also super elevated at the same slope as the sleeper and then from there we need to locate the bottom of the ballast layer and so this uh, layer is always going to be a minimum critical depth below the lower of the two inside points on the sleepers and so the way we accomplish this is to locate uh, a point that's that depth below the, uh, the bottom of the sleeper on each side, back calculate the center uh, point for the bottom of the layer, and then take the lower of the two points calculated and use that as our actual uh, center point for the bottom of the ballast layer. From there, uh, we construct a slope intersection that runs out at our subgrade slope and then back up to the edge of the choker. Uh, we do that on each side and we then construct a second choker and then repeat the, um, the uh, intersect slopes from a point that was located at the, our sub-ballast depth below the bottom of the ballast. And then we have our sub-base layer located the same way, uh, locate the bottom point, intersect slopes, and then these end uh, slopes here are not actually vertical. In order to uh, enable uh, Civil 3D to form a proper datum surface from these, uh, this corridor model, uh, what we will uh, need to do here is make sure that these points um, here are actually slightly to the inside of the top point here so our, our slope comes back down up to the center, back down the other side, and then back out. And then that guarantees that we'll be able to create a proper datum surface from this. Uh, once uh, we have all of this done, our subassembly is complete, ready to send out to Civil 3D. And so we simply go up here to File Export Catalog and then we have the option of what uh, version of Civil 3D we want to deploy to and so we'll go ahead and say OK to this and then it's prompting us for a zip file name and this is a uh, 
a package file, an archive file, that contains all of the, the DLLs and all of the other files necessary to run uh, the subassembly catalog that you just created in uh, Civil 3D and to redistribute that uh, subassembly catalog to any machine. The, uh, the file consists of all of the common uh, DLL files, a dynamically generated DLL that contains the code that uh, is used to construct the geometry of the subassembly that you just built, and then also a dynamically generated uh, tool catalog file. So we'll go ahead and save this. And now we're prompted to uh, deploy. And so we'll go ahead and deploy this to this machine. And you can see that we successfully deployed to our AECC content directory. Now that we've fired up Civil 3D, uh, we've opened up a, a drawing that we can use to test the subassembly we just created. Um, and we've also opened up the content browser. So all we need to do is right click, add catalog. I'll drag the dialog back on the screen here. Browse to our AECC content directory, which I copied right out of the command history from Subassembly Studio. Scroll down to our dynamically generated catalog file. Um, bring that in. Open it up. Use eyedrop to drag it into an empty palette. Close this. Click on our subassembly. Uh, here's all the uh, parameters that we had defined in Subassembly Studio. And uh, we're going to go ahead and leave them all at the defaults. Insert our rail escape and let our corridor rebuild. And you can see here, if we zoom in on the corridor, we have our positive super elevation case. And you can see the uh, construction of the uh, of this critical point for locating the bottom of the ballast layer here. And so it's calculated, here's our depth below this side, our depth below this side. Uh, this one's lower, so it's controlling, and then everything else is built from there. Uh, if we scroll over to uh, the end of our model here, uh, we're in our negative super elevation case, and you can see that now the left hand uh, track is controlling, whereas when we had positive super elevation, the right hand track had been 